In today's video, we brought to you guys a bunch of free blender add-ons that can help you do a ton of different stuff, like welding objects, batch rendering, lighting, productivity add-ons, and much more. So without further ado, let's jump right in. First, we're gonna start with this simple add-on that helps you weld objects fast and it does it really easily. You just have to collide two objects or more and you will start automatically noticing those welded seams as they appear in the sections of the intersection. The great thing is you can customize the properties of the welded areas, like its max and minimum size, so you can take advantage of the variety of the size of the welded chunks of metal, and to make it look more realistic. In addition, you can control the amount of welding you can apply, like in some areas you can increase it and vice versa in other areas. Also, you can change the resolution, which is a nice addition. Most importantly, you are not limited to welding just two objects, I mean two objects at a time, because you can weld multiple objects at the same time, especially if you have a combination of different objects coming from different directions and meeting in one point. From welding through the objects to welding renders, we have this desktop app that allows you to batch your blender renders together to help you automate the process and save yourself a ton of time that could be spent and productively otherwise. We're gonna start with the obvious first. So this Windows program allows you to organize blender scenes on a list, which are gonna be rendered in a queue. So when a render is done, the app will automatically start the next one without you having to interfere with it manually and ruin everything with your carelessness. Besides this very important feature, whenever a render is done, the app will automatically notify you, just so you can tell what is going on and the progress that it is making. At the end of rendering, it will notify you again that the rendering is done, I mean the whole thing. And you can choose whether the computer is gonna be shut down, which is a cherry on top. Now, if you want to take full advantage of HDRIs inside Blender, then this small add-on is gonna be really helpful. First of all, it allows you to add your HDRIs easily after selecting your render engine, whether it be EV or Cycles. As a start, you can change the intensity of the HDRI and you can do that as a whole, which will affect the whole lighting of the scene. If you want to be more specific, you can change the intensity of the sun itself, especially if it is too bright or too dim. In addition, you can change the position of the HDRIs, whether it be on the Y, X, or Z axis. The interesting thing is that you can even import another HDRI, which you can manipulate just like the first one simultaneously. And as we said, you can change the intensity of the lighting, the sun itself, or its position, and you can rotate it as well to position it perfectly in the scene. This gives you an opportunity to fix the first HDRI if it has some missing things and make the lighting in your scene look perfect, especially as I said, if the first HDRI is lacking. All right, this next one might be very helpful to people who want to animate a lot. So the show and hide objects add-on allows you to, well, show and hide objects but the functionality is more helpful than that. For instance, it can hide objects forward and backwards, meaning if you are animating multiple objects and you need to hide an object at a certain point in the animation, this add-on will allow you to automate the process for you. This will work for single objects as well as multiple selected objects at the same time, which is really helpful. Under the hood, what the add-on does is basically just setting keyframes of the visibility of objects in the viewport and rendering settings, but also having controls neatly available to you, which is again gonna save you a lot of time and effort and a lot of headaches. And of course, you have the option to set everything to visible again or make everything visible temporarily. You can get the add-on by following the link in the description down below. Back again to the topic of rendering, this desktop program allows you to guesstimate how long your renders will take to finish. And all you have to do is enter the number of frames per render, how much a frame will take to render, and how many machines you are going to be working on on each render. From what I can see, the functionality of this tool, or the result is going to help you with, isn't that hard to come up with yourself, unless you are useless when it comes to math, in which case this tool becomes mandatory. The good thing is, the new version brought support to Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. 
Also, in the next versions, the developer wants to add an option with an estimated cost per rendering hour and another to print rendering times, which is gonna be generated as a PDF file. Around the same topic, if you want to create cool looking renders while keeping everything neat, then you will need to keep noise under control. If you remember, with Blender 3 we have seen the update of the Intel Open Image Denoise which improved how we can deal with artifacts and other annoying issues. Even though the update added the ability to separate the render into passes, there was still some things that could have been improved further. And this is exactly what this add-on is for. The noise comp add-on allows you to apply denoising only to the selected passes you choose which is gonna give you a lot of freedom and control over the final result and how it's gonna look like. Everything looks better with a little shake and simple camera shake add-on by the same developer is a testament to that. This free gem allows you to create really good looking shake effects on your cameras and what I like about this add-on is that it gives you a really good camera movement right out of the box. The four provided camera shake presets are really good but the add-on does not stop there. It gives you more parameters to control the effect. Two sets of sliders for the location and two sets for the rotation. Both can be adjusted to set the intensity, which is labeled strength and duration, which is labeled scale. In addition, the created animation can also be restricted to a frame range by ticking the restrict frame range checkbox, which in turn gives you access to the blend in fields, which I think is pure genius. The blend in and out fields allows you to smooth in your camera shake in and out as your animation is gonna be looping, eliminating that cut that you can see jumping from one end to another. I mean the last frame and the first frame in the loop. Of course the animation can also be further adjusted in the graph editor where you can see all the procedurally generated graphs and the add-on itself has a lot of potential. For example, there is a feature where you can layer multiple shake animations on top of each other. So guys, if you like the add-ons we mentioned in this video, you can take a look at the description down below so you can get any add-on you want for free. And if you like what you see, please consider supporting the developers because they have put a lot of work on this for free. Also, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and you can take a look at some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.